We're in California, and uh, we came to this really weird looking, funky green building. I had no idea what to expect. I thought we were going to do some kind of like VR demonstration uh, with NVIDIA. They invited us here. But no, that's not what we're doing. It's that plus something crazy. You want to you wanna tell them? They have found the secret to mobile gaming, and the secret is putting a full sized GPU in a laptop. Now, we really couldn't do this before because, I mean, heat, uh, the amount of power that that thing would, would draw would sometimes be more than the entire laptop and all the components combined. But with the Maxwell architecture, uh, they're using a GTX 980. They're able to keep it at around 160 watts on the power draw. We do have a decently large brick on these, but these laptops are not much larger. Uh, actually, some of them are about the same size as the previous generation 17 and 18 inch uh, you know, gaming laptops mm -hmm. that are out there on the market. So they brought us here and we actually got to uh, check out some different benchmarks. You know what, put it in the benchmarks right here and go watch them. All right, so this is the Clio laptop right here and um, this one's running full size 980 and this is just 3D Mark score. So break it down. We're gonna compare this to a, a regular 980. Okay, so this this is a, well, it's a, it is a regular 980 and it happens to just be in a laptop. This one's actually running a Skylake CPU, so it's a little bit newer, so you can see you're gonna, you're gonna see a difference in the scores here, but the graphics score is 13424. Uh, you know, it's running graphics test one, 65 FPS and 52 on test two. Uh, so it's up there. Physics score is pretty darn high, but that's also, again, because of Skylake. So let's move on to the other one, check it out, just so you can see this that... This is the system right here. This is the system. Yep. It's running this really <clears throat> awesome case mm -hmm. with this really cool logo on top. And it's, like I said, they said full disclosure, it is um, a 4770K in here. And this one, you can see, 13561. We're looking at a hundred, what, hundred points difference, but it's the same GPU, but again, it's also in a, you know, different, different environment, different cooling. I was saying you could probably blow on the other one and get a little extra air in there and it would work just mm -hmm. fine to match or beat this score. But this one here, because of the, the other CPU, it's got a slightly lower physics score, right, but, but, <clears throat> but the graphics test is almost the same, but slight advantage here, the, but Well, slight. again, this is a, I'm going to say this is probably because you do the graphics test. One is the FPS is about the same. The graphics test two is a little bit higher by one FPS, but I think that's just again, because of you've got that's, thermal that's issues. That's my, that's my stuff, guess would yeah. be that because of a, uh, you know, it, it's not going to heat up as much in the laptop or in the desktop as the laptop. All right, so checking out Shadow of Mordor, desktop versus the laptop, and the performance is almost identical. We're talking um, a margin of error that you normally would scrape in any looking at statistics. Yeah, again, different CPU, but this game is so GPU bound that I think even an APU would run this at like 85 FPS, well, I mean, really. You, so it's, you, it's, it is GPU bound, and because they're the same GPUs, we were still seeing literally one FPS faster It'd be on very the desktop I mean, you... versus the laptop. And if you ran this test a few times, you're probably going to see that uh, shift one way or the other, again, also depending on... Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm going to honestly think that the laptop is getting that one FPS lower because of thermal functions. If you blocked one of the fans over on the desktop, I think you'd get Or if you crank the fans up on the laptop. Top, you know, it, might, yeah. it might just do the same and may even pull ahead, depending on how well... Clevo's those built their their thermal design. But again, uh, we got the desktop performance on a laptop. My brain is on uh, fire right now. All right, so we got the Tomb Raider uh, benchmark here. We've got this uh, This is the Clevo laptop. It's minimum FPS is 78, max is 132, and the average is about 103.6, which is, again, laptop. Bloody amazing. Move over here to the actual desktop, and we're seeing, again, 1% margin of error or 1% variation. So you got 80, 140, 106.9. Now let's talk about the specs. Uh, I wanted to get to the benchmarks first because some people just want to know how fast it is. But if you're nerdy enough to watch till the end, now you're going to hear about the specs. So this has the full 2048 cores, like just you know, just like on the GTX 980. It's pretty much the same thing. It is. It is. It, it, they, they, there was one of the things that they stressed was it, it is basically they took the chip and they shoved it into this really awesome, power-efficient, thermal-efficient... Not the same PCB, but, I mean, the, the specifications are going to be different, and some of these are going to be integrated into the entire, uh, you know, single PCB for the entire, uh, you know, motherboard. That all depends on the OEM and the right, manufacturer right. and how they decide what's best for them and best for their design and whatnot, but the, the basic concept is sound, and it's there. And so now, compared to, like, um, the GPUs that we've seen uh, on older uh, laptops or just regular, you know, mobile uh, gaming GPUs, this one's pushing seven, sometimes 7.5 gigabits per second as far as the memory bandwidth. The most ever before this was around five. So that's a, that's a pretty big step up. Uh, beyond that's, that, that, mm -hmm. that's memory bandwidth in a laptop. 
In a laptop, yes. I want to put the specification out. That was memory bandwidth. They right, stressed right, right. it. it was, this is a first series of firsts in a laptop. Mm -hmm. Now also, uh, like I said, full, full, full amount of cores and um, the, the power delivery system on this, that's very important because they've enabled overclocking, freaking overclocking on uh, you know GPUs and laptops. Now the power phases uh, typically are like two or three with regular GPUs and, and laptops. These are between four and eight and they're um, higher quality. The, the Asus with the water cooling unit, I'll just tell you, show you that in just a second, uh, that has eight power phases, but some of these have four. And uh, I mean, they're all working on their own programs to overclock these. So as you can see, this is MSI Afterburner on the screen right now. And uh, there were eight different uh, eight different laptop uh, designs that we were looking at today, or that they have right. that are in the mix. And uh, one of them was a Clevo, which was really kind of neat. As Cle we were, Clevo, yeah, Clevo. Clevo, yeah. and then we had, uh, there was a couple of MSIs and some Asus, and the Asus one has a, a water cooling block that it docks into, which I was like. That bends my brain quite a bit, but I think the idea here with this is that, you know, you come home, you got your, your dock, you can plug in and really get a good overclock going. I mean, we were able to push the one without water cooling to 1400 megahertz. Just barely. And it, it really, again, it all barely, based, yeah. on, it like 13, based on temperature. 30. So when we first started to do this overclock on this one machine that was fully air cooled, it was, uh, it was, it was running a little, it was the MSI, it was running a little hot. We kicked the overclock up. It hit its thermal load, I think like almost immediately. And it, it wasn't willing to go very fast. We kicked the fan to the turbo mode in high gear, let it cool off a little bit and then pushed it back and it was able to get all the way up to 14 mega, 1400 megahertz. And at it was- At 82 degrees Celsius. At 82 degrees. And it sat there because we started at a colder, colder clock and, and was able to move it up a little further. So the Asus is gonna be able to go even farther than that because the, the power phases, but mainly the water cooling. Even with fewer power phases, you might be able to do it if you have good enough cooling. That's the bottom line with a lot of this stuff. But you know, it's also got 50% more power delivery available and that's only gonna be for overclocking. You don't need that otherwise, um, but it's, it's all there. Now, the one other machine that I've been looking forward to getting my yes. hands on for a long while, they've, I'm just gonna lay it all out there. It's the, the, the GT80 from MSI with the mechanical switch keyboard. The one we got to play with had brown switches. Yes. And um, we're not even gonna go into the cherry reds and browns. We shouldn't even do it in this video, but. I'm just gonna be joking. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna run out of it because I think this is amazing and it makes this laptop very, very exciting. And it even has two, not one, that, two. That's what's exciting to me because you know what? I if, with that much speed in a laptop, I could probably even deal with reds. I don't like reds either, but browns and two GTX 980s, these are desktop units running an SLI. That's, I, it's, I, a, it's a big laptop. I mean, it's an 18.4 it it's, 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 an it's a big yeah. laptop. It's a big laptop and it's, it's heavy. Uh, and it's not it's not really a laptop anymore. It is a portable gaming machine, which in the event that that's what you're looking for, is something that you can get up and take with you, you now have an SLI solution in a portable machine. Here, I'm gonna do MSI's marketing right now. It's the ultimate, uh, it's the ultimate LAN party solution. There you go, that's, that, you guys can pay me later for that for marketing. For now. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, next up, VR. Now, the, now, doing VR on notebooks. It's not really been a thing. And, and that's, that's what I thought we were coming here to see was just like some VR demo. I didn't realize it was gonna be on a freaking notebook. And, and that's again, it's one of the, the, the issues with VR has in general, just when it comes to pushing the, 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 the stereoscopic display is that it's actually pushing, what would you say? It's, it's 90 frames per second. It's four or five times like what you would push with like a 1080p because you have to push 90 frames per second and you have to do it with a couple different displays. So you're pushing far more gigapixels, uh, megapixels. Megapixels, yeah. It's like, <laughs> gigapixels, megapixels. Gigapixels are yeah, like, yeah, It's basically great. like being there. Um, yeah, no, it's uh, so you're pushing a lot more. Um, so, so even even more. in a um, you know you get like a like a three screen display, you're only pushing three 1080p's at up you know 60 ish uh, hertz on a, on a on a monitor. This is pushing it's a stereoscopic display, but the the resolution is a little bit higher than a 1080p on both the vertical and right. the horizontal, and then it's two of them at 90 frames a second. So you end up looking at about five times the megapixels per second that you need to be able to render, and that is very difficult for all of the the, the notebook GPUs. Yeah. Until now. And last off, um, in, in order to prevent the nausea and all that nonsense, you have to make sure that the latency is no greater than like 200 milliseconds. So the frame time variance is very important, and they've got that down as well. So, so I, you know, we got to do the uh, the Crescent Bay demonstration in Nvidia at PAX, mm -hmm. and that was on a desktop. That was actually running on a 980 Ti or Ti, whatever it is. And then uh, you talk to us. Yeah, no, no, no. Ti, I think, is official. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that was running on a 980 Unless you Ti. Talk to Tom. Tom says uh, 980 Ti. Yeah. yeah. I like calling it TIE because I always think of a TIE fighter, but... I just know. think of Titanium. Titanium? Titanium when TIE ask. fighter, that's my rap name. That's an awful rap name. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Yeah. Do you do the Star Wars rap? We'll just wrap this up. 
Okay, we're gonna wrap this up. So, <laughs> you made me lose my brain. Anyway, so I don't, I don't, I have no rhythm. Uh, I have no beats either. I don't. Only radishes and carrots. Fruit and bagels. I like. I like. You've distracted my brain. VR. So VR at PAX was on a 980 Ti on a desktop machine, and it was really smooth and fantastic. I just played it here, same Crescent Bay, on a laptop, with a 980, and uh, I couldn't really tell the difference. It's a desktop it's the GPU. Yeah, it's not a, a laptop. It's not, it's, that's what it really boils down to, is you're looking at a desktop-sized GPU in a laptop that is able to run, and it's able to keep up with a desktop running the same GPU. I think we should remake this entire video, both of us just sit here the entire time going, it's a desktop GPU in a laptop. It's a desktop GPU inside of a laptop. Wait, wait, you're telling me it's a desktop GPU inside, inside a, a laptop. laptop. You heard it here first, maybe in a second, depending on who uploads first. All right, comment, let us know what you guys think. Thanks to NVIDIA for uh, bringing us down here. This yeah. is freaking awesome. It's pretty awesome. See you guys in the comments on the website.